Good evening, everyone. My name is Monica Gattinger. I'm a professor at the University of Ottawa. I've been a student of energy policy and regulation for almost three decades. It pains me to say that. I am not Indigenous, and the perspective I share with you this evening is my own. It's based upon my research, knowledge, and experience. For the last 10 years, through a research and engagement program called Positive Energy, I've worked very closely with leaders in the energy sector from business, government, Indigenous organizations, and academia to identify how to strengthen public confidence in energy and climate decision making. One of the most exciting developments over that time, and in particular in the last five years, is the remarkable strides being made towards economic reconciliation through major energy projects. But before getting to my thoughts, I'd like to ask you to reflect on your own knowledge and experience with economic reconciliation. When you think about big energy projects and Indigenous communities, what comes to mind? Is it conflict between Indigenous peoples and companies? Is it projects that don't reflect Indigenous peoples' values, perspectives, and worldviews? Is it governments that approve major projects despite the opposition of Indigenous communities? Is it protests, demonstrations, and altercations between Indigenous people and police? Is it legal challenges brought by Indigenous groups opposing projects in the courts? In my conversations with people outside of the energy sector, my friends, my family, people at the dog park, people at the shopping mall, these images tend to be the dominant view. But there's a whole other world of economic activity in the energy sector. The emergence of more and more constructive relationships between Indigenous communities, companies, and governments. Now, I'm not here to say that all is sweetness and light. There's still much work to be done on economic reconciliation. But developments in the last few years are remarkable, they're inspiring, and they give me great hope for the future. First, increasingly we're seeing communities enter into unprecedented partnerships with industry to develop energy projects of all types. Companies are working in new and innovative ways with Indigenous communities to co-design projects and ensure that projects respect community values, community interests, environmental protection, sustainable economic development opportunities, and revenue streams for communities, respect for tradition, culture, and language. Importantly, these partnerships are increasingly equity partnerships, where Indigenous communities have an ownership stake in the project. The examples abound. Everything from pipelines, to electricity transmission lines, to battery storage projects, and on and on. Second, increasingly we're seeing Indigenous communities lead the design, development, and ownership of projects, paving the way to a new generation of Indigenous-owned infrastructure. This has already been the case for some time in solar and in wind, but it's extending increasingly to other energy sources as well. The Heisla Nation's Cedar LNG facility on BC's west coast is but the most recent example. Valued at $3 billion, it's the largest First Nation energy-owned project in Canada so far. Third, Indigenous communities are increasingly setting their own standards for environmental protection and the assessment of tolerable impacts of projects on their territory's land, air, water, and ways of life. The emergence of Indigenous standards operating alongside federal and provincial government standards is a little-known but remarkable, uh, remarkably important transformation, articulating what's important to a community in its own terms when it comes to project impacts. Finally, increasingly we're seeing Indigenous communities assume the role of regulator, evaluating projects proposed in their territories using their own standards, processes, traditional knowledge, and worldviews. They're putting in place frameworks to decide whether a project should or shouldn't be allowed to proceed, and under what conditions. Smart companies are getting with the program. All of these developments are important steps in the process of economic reconciliation. 
They are tangible expressions of what it truly means for a company to consent, for a community to consent to a project. The growing spirit of collaboration that I see between indigenous communities, companies, and governments has more and more momentum. But there's much more work to be done. To participate in projects with equity positions, indigenous communities need access to capital. Access to loans and loan guarantees from governments are an important place to start. Banks and other parts of the investment community will also need to step up, developing new business models and financing approaches for projects. Some of this is already happening. And energy companies still have a long ways to go. Increasingly, they understand that the best path to an energy project ending up in service, not in court, is taking the time to build respectful relationships and meaningful business partnerships with Indigenous communities. But we need greater awareness, understanding, and action across corporate Canada. Governments also need to change how they do things. There's work to do to identify how Indigenous-led impact assessments and Indigenous regulatory processes work alongside federal and provincial standards and regulation. Instead of duplicating processes, are there opportunities for federal and provincial governments to defer to Indigenous processes or to harmonize with them? For that to happen, governments need to be prepared to cede some control, something that they may find very difficult to do but it may be one of the most important steps that they can take in the process of economic reconciliation. Let us not forget that many major projects needed for Canada to pursue its energy and climate goals will be situated on or travel across Indigenous territories. Geothermal, carbon capture utilization and storage, hydropower, electricity transmission lines, liquefied natural gas, wind and solar energy, and on and on. I can't think of a more exciting time to roll up our sleeves. Thank you. <laughs>